Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting cubic equation. We have x cubed minus 93x minus 308 equals 0, and we're going to be finding the values of x. Now, suppose the roots of this equation are m, n, and k. Now, the statement of the problem didn't say anything about integer solutions, but we're definitely going to check. When you get a polynomial equation, always check for integer solutions. You know, we have something called rational root theorem. So if there are any rational roots, they can be written as the divisors of the constant term divided by the divisors of the leading coefficient. But since we have a monic polynomial, which means the coefficient of x cubed is 1, all the rational solutions, if there are any, are going to be integers. So, we're going to be testing for integer solutions. Let's go ahead and use Vieta's formulas. By the way, if you are interested in Vieta's formulas, I made a video on Vieta's formulas. You can go ahead and check it out right here. And Vieta's formulas basically give us the following. The sum of the roots, the product of the roots, and the sum of the two-way products, the sum of the three-way products, depending on the degree of the equation. But in this case, I can find m plus n plus k, which is the sum, and it's always negative b over a. That's what's cool about Vieta's formulas. Regardless of the degree of the polynomial equation, the sum of the roots is always negative b over a. You know, negative b being the coefficient of the second term and a being the coefficient of x cubed in this case, which is 1, so we don't have to worry about it. In this case, there is no x squared, which is real cool. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, so it's 0, right? There's no x squared. It's 0 x squared. So m plus n plus k is equal to 0. That's nice. What about the two ways? mn, mk, and nk. That is c over a. c is negative 93, so it's going to be negative 93. Simple, right? Very easy. What about the product? Well, the product is the coolest part here because that's what we're going to work on basically. The product is negative d over a, which is the opposite of the constant term in this case, that will be 308. And that is the key to the solution. Now, like I said earlier, the statement didn't say integers, but we'll definitely check for them. So let's go ahead and take a quick look or closer look at the product. We have m and k, which is the product of three numbers, and 308 can be factored. Let's go ahead and factor it. 308 can be written as, let's see, uh oh what kind of equal sign is that? 308 can be written as 2 times 154. Two, uh, 154 can be written as 2 times 77. And 77 can be written as 7 times 11. Okay. Wow, that's cool. So that is the prime factorization. If you want to write in powers, that's fine too. But I'd like to keep it that way. 2, 2, 7, 11. But here's the thing. If I'm looking for integer solutions, of course, I could have used the rational root theorem, which tells us if there are any integer solutions in this case, then they would have to be divisors of 308, which is uh, quite a few. But this is better than that because it kind of gives us some scenarios. Take a look at the product, 2, 2, 7, 11. Well, there are four numbers. I don't want that. I want three numbers, but don't worry. We'll take care of that. But one thing to keep in mind is the sum of the roots here, which is zero. Hmm. What is that supposed to mean? Well, it just means that uh, at least one of the roots is negative, right? Otherwise, if you add three positive numbers, you can't get zero. No way. Impossible. So we want to get something, uh, three numbers that add up to zero, and the numbers uh, or the product can be factored into 2 times 2 times 7 times 11. Take a look at the following. If I kind of group the, the twos together and write this product as 4 times 7 times 11, I immediately realize, maybe not immediately all the time, but if you looked at it before, 4 plus 7 is equal to 11. So why is that important, right? Well, it's important because if you put everything on the right-hand side, you're going to get the following. 11 plus negative 4 plus negative 7 is equal to 0. And if you multiply 4 times, I mean negative 4 times, you know what I'm talking about, times negative 7 times 11, you're going to get 3 of 8. Hmm, that's interesting. So that is the product, and that is the sum. Let me write it. This is sum. This is the product. So far, so good, right? 
Okay, we have to check one more thing. What is that? It is the MN, MK, and K thing, the two-way thingy. This one right here. Okay, how do you check that? Easy. You just plug it in. MN, MK, and NK. Okay, what is M? What is N? It doesn't matter. So let's just, because they could switch around easily, right? How about call this M, call this N, and call this K? Easy. Okay, MN, that is 28 plus MK. That is negative 44. NK, negative 77. These two will make 121, but that's a negative. So 28, if you add them up, you're going to get negative 93. What? You can't be serious. Yes, I am serious. We get the sum. Oh, it's not a coincidence, of course. This problem is contrived, as some people call it. Of course, it's been arranged, but it's still fun, right? So we got the values. Well, seriously, that's it? Well, we got it, so we don't have to worry about it further, right? Like, you don't have to search for, like, can we find non-integer solutions? No. There's only three solutions. Remember the theorem, something, I don't know what it's called right now. But anyways, so the solutions are negative 7, negative 4, and 11. Now, can we look at this problem from another angle? I know I've, I've been using this term in other videos, like I kept saying Cardano and Cardano, but thank you. Uh, one of my viewers, Laurent uh, Thais, I hope I didn't mispronounce your name, he brought it to my attention and he said, do not say Cardano's method because you're giving him credit. He doesn't deserve it. So Cardano basically copied the work of Tartaglia and he uh, said he wasn't going to share with anyone unless he has Tartaglia's permission. And he didn't have his permission and he still published it. So he's a cheater, whatever. Um, so we're going to call it Tartaglia's method, but there's also a trigonometric method which you can use, right? Anyways, you can read the comment. Maybe I'll post it um, somewhere. Uh, maybe copy, I don't know. I'll figure that. So Tartaglia's method basically tell us the following. So which color should we use? Okay, I think this is a good color for Tartaglia. So let me rewrite this cubic thing. So if I subtract 3ab times a plus b from a plus b quantity cube, I get a cube plus b cube. Now, we're going to do a little bit of hocus pocus here, Tartaglia hocus pocus. We're going to replace a plus b with x and then a cube plus b cube with 308 because when we put the 308 on the right hand side, remember, that's going to be a positive. We're going to replace this guy over here with 93 because it's already negative. So everything looks good. Look at that. We got the same equation, x cubed minus 93x equals 308, subtract it, and you'll get the original one. Wow, this is incredible. Of course, it's Tartaglia. It is incredible. So how do you solve this? Well, you get the following from here. A plus B is X, so we have to find A and B and add them up to get the X, but we also get a nice system from here, and I'm not going to solve it completely because you can do it. I trust you guys. Uh, so A cubed plus B cubed. Cube both sides. Oh, man, that's going to be a really large number. Let's see. Um, let me use my... Superpowers, a cubed, b cubed is equal to 29,791. Wow, that was easy, right? Okay, anyways, so get the idea. So this is our system. If you replace uh, b cubed with a, uh, 308 minus a cubed here, you're going to get a quadratic. Of course, you have to replace a cubed with c, so on and so forth. And, and this is the equation you get after replacing a cubed with c and doing the replacements, like replacing b cubed with, oh man, a lot of replacements. Substitution is awesome. You get the following equation. C squared minus 308C plus 29,791. What? That's a crazy number. And if you solve this equation, you're going to get the value of C. And then if you cube root it, you're going to get the A and then B and then add them up. Good luck. Okay. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.